Maybe. Next up, LeBron and Kevin Durant are meeting in the finals for their third time in their careers. Each guy has picked up a ring mm. and a finals MVP so far. So, Byron, on this for you. Mm. LeBron KD rivalry. Something, nothing, or everything? For me, I think it's everything. Yeah. I, I mean, these two guys, I think they, you know, I think KD especially, he measures himself against the best, and we know the best of LeBron James. So if he can win this series and he can have the type of series that he had last year, mm -hmm. which would give him another MVP and another ring, he feels that he's on that level of, of LeBron James, where he has to be talked about as one of the best or not the – or. 1 a.m. and 1 of the game. as far as the no, game's I mean, look, best player. Be so. Kevin is younger than LeBron, so the question is always sort of has Kevin or will Kevin pass LeBron as the greatest current player in the game? So something for KD, nothing for LeBron. Mm. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, like, I don't. I like that, Kevin. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, LeBron is unrivaled. Right. So anything KD does or does not do in a Warriors jersey is not going to impact LeBron's legacy. But as you say, LeBron is the measuring stick for any. Mm -hmm. guy who plays that position, who essentially is between 6'6 six, six and 6'11, six, mm -hmm. uh, who, who does what Katie does. I want to say nothing, nothing on LeBron's side for what you just said, but nothing for Kevin Durant because I feel like we talked about this at the MVP award. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the race earlier in the year. It's Harden is so-and-so. And we never say KD and we never say Steph. And they kind of forfeited yeah. that, that ability to be you part of those conversations. You join a team like that. And I don't have a problem with it because their, their priorities are the highest, mm -hmm. which is winning. And we're going to look back and say they had great careers. But it's going to be tough for us to have any sort of KD-LeBron comparisons as long as KD lives in well, heaven, basketball heaven. I would disagree with you only in that last year in those NBA finals, which were a little bit more even because you had Kyrie Irving on the other side of the mm -hmm. court, when KD hit that was a step back three over no, LeBron the, the in the transition three, transition yeah. three right, yeah. in the decisive yeah. game. And yeah. it was sort of like, oh, and you did hear for the first time. Paul Pierce, for example, on our air saying, oh, okay, which we know he's got some personal feelings. He's got some feelings. Paul has some feelings about LeBron, so we know that. But you did hear people start to ask, okay, are we getting to the point, LeBron's turning 33, are we getting to the point where Kevin Durant is going to overtake him as your sort of reflexive, he's the best player in the NBA right now. I think LeBron has put that conversation off for another year, no matter what happens in these finals, because the teams are so unbalanced. So you feel like, okay, even if LeBron, you know, doesn't really do anything against the Warriors in this finals, you're never going to feel like it's his fault. Right. And he has done so much in these playoffs at the age of 33 in his 15th year. You're still going to say, all right, if I had to pick up teams on the blacktop of who I want to win a game today, my answer is still LeBron James. Yeah. That will not always be the case. Kevin Durant wants to be the answer to that question. I just don't know if these finals are where we're going to get me. Changing around on that. I don't know. Moving on. Ty Lu leading the Cavs to the finals for the third straight year as a head coach. This was very, let's just say a difficult road, right? Two game sevens along the way. So is his third straight finals appearance, Byron, something, nothing, or everything? Because people always say, oh, anyone could coach LeBron James. No, I, I think it's everything. I, I think the things that he had to go through from a physical standpoint as mm -hmm. well, uh, you know, that he, you know, being – you know, uh, asked for a leave of absence mm -hmm. during the season. I think the stress was getting to him. The expectations of this team, you know, winning championships and getting there, I think that that is, you know, huge, you know, for a coach. So, you know, when you're coaching this league, you know, people that say, oh, it should be fun, it's easy, you're coaching LeBron mm -hmm. James, you don't understand. It, it's probably the most stressful position you can have in sports because of the expectations. So uh, for Ty Lue to get there for three straight years, that is everything. I think he's done an unbelievable job of putting – behind him some of his, you know, his, his physical problems that he's had and being able to deal with it and still get this team to another championship series. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, first of all, I forgot about that, all the, him being sick and missing games. It's just kind of so you, much has happened this year. has happened with this Cavs yeah. season. <laughs> so I'm going to say everything because, I mean, that's, that, they can't take that experience away from you as a coach. Mm -hmm. And as you kind of insinuated, coaching LeBron isn't easy. People think it's easy because you yeah, just right, give him right, the ball. Right, yeah. It's, no, no, it's no, no, the no. opposite because you have to you have to challenge him. You have to make him feel like, look, I'm not just sitting here and let you do all the work because that's a recipe for LeBron saying, let me get out of here. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, how many different rosters did Ty Lue have yeah. to figure out and coach with and not the best rosters all the time? What do you think? You know, I, I think it's something. He's a better game manager than I think he's given credit for. Mm -hmm. The combustibility of that locker room, and as you said, times two, is I mean, managing that is an achievement unto itself, and and so I, I, I do think it's something. And again, I, I sort of forgotten about what he dealt with from a, from a health standpoint too. And I mean, it is a difficult, stressful job.
I mean, I think also it is something, I mean, I am a huge Brad Stevens person. I voted for him for coach of the year. I think he deserves all the credit he's mm -hmm. getting. Ty Lue matched him coaching in that series. There was a lot of back and forth coaching, roster, you know, uh, lineup changes, things like that. Ty Lue stood there and he coached against him. And yes, of course, it helps to have LeBron James on your team. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying Ty's better coach than Brad. But I, I do think that you, we make, we lionize Brad Stevens. We make such a big deal of it. You have to then give credit to the coach that beat him. Yeah, and we don't give enough credit to Ty Lue. Yeah. He also, he also knows all the words of Meek Mill's dreams. And <laughs> so I, was, I was impressed, Coach. That was pretty impressive in the locker room after they won game Tracy seven. Tracy doesn't. <laughs> There's a video of Tracy not knowing the words to that song, by the way. Can't all be Hall of Famers. Let's take a look at this exchange. This was oh. As Dan Gilbert is congratulating the team on their way into the trophy ceremony, Jetty gives him a bull to fight, whatever. LeBron barely looks at him. Kevin, is this something nothing wrong? This is something. The threat of LeBron's dissatisfaction it was, is what drives his leverage. Mm -hmm. I mean, he drives the value of that team. Dan Gilbert might be a zillionaire. LeBron James you know, is, exercises his power, and this is one of the ways he does it. The threat of him leaving, the threat that he is dissatisfied, the threat that they have not assembled an acceptable roster is what gives him leverage. So Dan Gilbert's from Detroit originally, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So in the words of another Detroit native, Named Big Sean, LeBron just said, I don't, I'm with you. <laughs> That's what that is. That is everything. Oh. That is everything right there. Because oh, no. even at the happiest moment of their season, LeBron saw who it was and said, nah, I, even, I'm not even going to let it sit aside even at this moment. Hey, let's just be happy for this moment. I want you to know that I control the destiny of this franchise by virtue of where <laughs> I'm going to go. First of all, LeBron is a very shrewd oh, yes, businessman. Okay. Let, let's, let's get that straight. And he's a very intelligent businessman as well. So this is everything. Yeah. Like you said, to, to not give him any eye contact and to walk by him kind of like what you just said. Hey, what's up, man? What's happening? Yeah. And that's basically what he did. You know, and, and like Kevin times. said, this He's basically was, I telling think, me, what, I run this. The ring ceremony, yeah. everything's good. This relationship to me is so fascinating because we saw it obviously just explode when LeBron left the first time. Mm -hmm. I thought that was irrevocable. I think especially I the too. words in that language in that I letter. Too. Um, and so they had a sort of come to Jesus meeting in Florida during the recruitment of LeBron to come back to Cleveland. I think there were some agreements on sort of what Dan's role and sort of how things would be and what he was promising LeBron if LeBron came back. And we saw things work and sort of, they weren't tight, but there was an uneasy sort of acceptance through right. those. We just saw the video, 2015, 2016, even part of 2017. That frayed apart this year. LeBron did not want Kyrie Irving traded. Mm. He said he did not want Kyrie Irving traded. They traded him anyway. The deal that they made for Kyrie Irving, LeBron said he didn't like. They did it anyway. There's been a bunch of stuff where... Going back to Gilbert. Yeah. Or, so David Griffin. Uh, David Griffin. He didn't want David Griffin to leave the mm -hmm. franchise. And Dan Gilbert said, we're doing that anyway. So I think that this relationship, what has happened to it in the last year, has been really interesting. The way we describe it, by the way, just understand, in 29 cities, the owner is the boss. Mm -hmm. In that city, he's LeBron's co-worker. Mm. If not, his, say, subor it, if not his subordinates. <laughs> well, yes and no, though, because in the end, I don't know. I mean, LeBron can't pick the players. Again, didn't want Kyrie Irving traded, and Kyrie Irving gets well, traded. He can pick one player's destiny. Well, that's true. <laughs> and that'd be number 23. There right, you go. there we go. There we go. All right, well, Kevin, thank you for stopping by for this. We'll see you later in the finals. Thank you, you very much.